So do you think it's right that, uh, talk about mm -hmm. the rotation of general mm -hmm. managers and artistic directors, do you think there should be a kind of musical chairs uh, every five to seven years or? I suppose there should be a, I suppose you have to know when, when your, your efficiency is, or maybe you're holding people back and you should go. I don't know because for me it wasn't a job. It was, it was, it, it was my it was my fun it was my life it was it was everything i enjoyed and and i don't actually and i know this sounds really silly but i don't think that i had days when i didn't want to come in here more than a handful and and i do hear people in jobs in the theater uh say that they're not enjoying it and that's too hard, and, and, and it probably is, and they just can't turn it around, and they, and it's, it's, it's really frustrating. I, I don't know, I don't completely know why this place um, From the outside, we all assumed it was you. No. We assumed it was no. Mallory sitting in that <laughs> office that hadn't changed, no. No. you know, that that didn't have ambitions to have a bigger bay window or new fancy <laughs> office chairs, that it didn't change, and a kind of financial and artistic prudence came out of that. But you're saying that's not true. Well, it, I mean, I, yeah, some people say I was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I say that we had, as you know, we had a policy that we paid all the actors the same. There obviously were a few exceptions, people we really desperately couldn't get any other way. But for the most part, the the Martha Henrys and the you know the the, the wonderful actors who'd had a, a lot of time in the theater and had proven themselves worthy of a lot more money came here and took a salary that was exactly the same as the the, the person who'd only been around for three years, and it was it was a it was a decision, and. For me, it was it was a good one. Uh, it did have one wonderful side effect, which was when I started negotiating uh, with agents at the beginning of the season. I, some of them would say, "Okay, so what's the rate this year?" Because they knew that it was going to be the same for everybody. And. You know, you can all say that it wasn't. It might not have been enough. Although we kept we kept pushing it up and pushing it up and pushing it up. I mean, we did our best to do what we could, and still do the amount of work we were doing. And people who were starting out were happy with it. People who were at the mid range probably hoped for more, but understood. And those those actors who could have made three times that somewhere else came because of this play or the director or just their their belief in the tarragon and they knew that that it wasn't going to kill them to take that part of, that that part of their life right. at a lower scale no i've used the the, tar the tarragon mm -hmm. pay scale to shock business people yeah. and government people when they think oh yeah you're an artist you're making all that tv mm -hmm. and you say yeah. okay well here's what i'm making at tarragon and you probably underestimated it too <laughs> You always do. People always do. And that's where I got angry. Because we were, we were very much in line with, if not better uh, paying than, than many of the theaters in our range. Because when one talks about the, 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 the sort of subsidy of mm. the arts through, you know, through the mm -hmm. councils and mm -hmm. whatever, the, I always, in those discussions, try to put on the table, yes, uh, there are the arts councils and there are the municipal yeah. mm -hmm. councils and there's the artist subsidy. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you cannot. People cannot live on what a lot of theaters. The pay. artist subsidies, the, the 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 rest of the staff subsidy yeah. too. So sure, we're the, all we're all. I mean, I mean, for me, it didn't. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I mean, uh, I haven't felt. I've never felt underpaid, and I know that in other people's eyes, I was, but. I was, you know, I wouldn't have done anything else. I wouldn't have taken, I, well, I didn't want to go with Bill when he left. I didn't want to go to a big theater. I didn't want to go to Cannes stage or whatever. So it was, was that something. a conscious choice when Bill was moving on? Well, I mean, I could have. Did he ask you? We talked about it. 
but I had no, no desire to go. Why? Because I liked it here. What, you like the wallpaper? I, I, like, I, like, I like the fact that you're sitting on the other side of the rehearsal wall. I like the fact that you're walking through this building and you're walking through everything that happens in the building. You can walk into the shop, you can walk through the costume room, you've got everybody that, uh, that was my favorite thing, was that everything that happened on stage was produced in this building. And you have a train which we're hearing right now. And we now have a train, by the which, door. yeah, a great train. Usually it goes. And every at every 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 month you get a, a a van running into the bridge down there, and <laughs> <laughs> as well. But um, no, I, I and I I find it so sad when people have their theater in one place, their shop somewhere else, their you know their their at, uh, YPT used to have a whole section of people who had to, offices down the street. I mean, it's, it's, it's because you have to, but the thing about this building was we didn't have to, and everything was here, and you were, you were with, with people all the time. I mean, if you find a place, <laughs> why leave? Uh, and I, 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 I just, I, I, I adore this building. I mean, I came in today picking up the paper outside. I mean, I, <laughs> and I, I still love it. And, and uh, which is why, of course, I got so angry when I read the other day uh, Kelly saying that we were substandard. So, no, I don't think we are substandard. I mean, sure, we could we could change this floor, and we could we could do a lot of things, and we could have we could have more equipment, and we could find you know more lights, and we could. There's lots of things we could do, and it would make for better working conditions, but. We probably uh, we wouldn't lose anything, but as it is, it works too. It works because it's focused on the playwright. Yeah, it's substandard in that it it handcuffs designers because you are in a box. We don't have a yeah ceilings aren't high enough. A box that does not have yeah. a ceiling that yeah. does not have wings yeah. that yeah. does not. It's amazing what people can do when they don't have things. <laughs> We've had some fabulous re designs in this building. Oh, absolutely. Because they don't have, you know, 20 feet uh, more to play with. But it's a theater that, through its resources, yeah. has specifically, and this is your choices mm -hmm. in Bells and Urjo's, to place its emphasis, emphasis on the mm -hmm. writer yeah. and how that appears on stage and not what a technician mm -hmm. team, a technical team can do or a design team. Right. So, in a way, it has hobbled directors and designers in expressing that part because it's prejudiced, and for good reasons, the writers. Mm -hmm. Am I climbing the wrong hill here? Well, I'll give you, a, I'll give you half of that. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think in some way uh, hobbled them, perhaps, and also possibly uh, made them think a little harder about how you, how you make something work. I mean, what, what uh, Kami Ku did downstairs for um, East of Berlin. I mean, was fantastic in that little space. Or what I, Claudia, did in, in that tiny little space down there. I mean, you, you could swear you were walking into a basement when you entered a, a different door. Uh, designers have come up with fantastic designs. Astrid Jansen has done some incredible work in this theater. And she, you know, she's, she's, she, she goes for it. But you always know there is an edge. The design cannot go beyond a certain place. Is that what you think about when you come to the theater? Well, I mean, let's take East of Berlin. I mean, I really liked it, but then I saw the edges of it. And I thought, well, couldn't go there, couldn't go there. And I was very happy seeing that production in that space. Mm. But the well, designer I, had a wall beyond which they couldn't go. And I mean that literally and figuratively but, as well. But look at what she did as a result. Absolutely. Which nobody had ever, ever done in there. To create that space behind was, was like, I, I couldn't believe it when I walked in. It didn't look like the same room. Right. And that in itself is, is uh, to me, worth more than having all the bells and whistles. And having all the bells and whistles takes you down financial roads that sometimes oh, yes. put your Absolutely. theater in jeopardy. Absolutely. I mean, and I like going and seeing, you know, wild sets and, and lots of technicians and technical things, although I think we tend to go overboard on that a little bit.
to. Robert Lepage goes overboard on the technical aspects. No, Robert has, I mean, that's, that's his hope. That's the essence of who he is and how he works. So, I mean, that's, he's from the start. That's what he, what he wants to do. That's a, I, I, I think there's always, uh, there are always people who uh, know how to play with uh, what they've got, and, and they, they can use more and more and still amaze you. But that's a different kind of theater. I mean, that isn't a, a playwright's theater.